I'm the co-founder and uh, vice president in a company known as Lucidus. In today's my talk, I am going to show you some hacks which I feel that you should see. Daily we have seen so many news, you know, everyone is saying that this much bank account got hacked, someone pers some person's personal pictures with and without loss being released online. So I am going to show you today hacks which really mean to you being an Indian and at the end of the talk we'll talk about how together you and me can make our nation more secure than before in terms of cyber. So my talk is transforming digital India to secure digital India. Let me start with this story. September 2017. In America, everything was going very well. People are going to their job, having good time. But suddenly something happened. That something happened which really transformed cybersecurity forever in terms of finance in, in most of the countries. A company named Equifax got hacked. Now what is Equifax in case you do not know? It's a credit monitoring company which basically have records on every individual in America. So for example, if you have to apply for a loan, they will give you a credit score which is required to apply for the loan. Now this information is very confidential, which includes your social security number, just like the Aadhaar card in India. If someone gives you, if you give someone your Aadhaar card number, then there are certain kind type of attacks someone can perform. But in India, we are quite secure. Now most people think that US is far ahead than in terms of cyber security, of course they are. But one thing you should be proud of, the amount of attacks and money we are losing is far less than America, which is quite a deal. Now this company who keeps the financial data of almost every citizen of uh, America and the private financial data of almost 145 million American citizens leaked and was on sale in the deep web. How many of you know about deep web? Okay, are you a frequent visitor sir? Of course not, good. So in case you do not know what is deep web, so deep web is the internet which basically traditionally doesn't come on uh, internet. There are certain softwares to access the, that type of internet. And once you are on the, that internet, you can actually buy kind of bad things like drugs, guns and so on. So we should not go there for the time being. Now, personal, when I say personal financial data, that does not mean this type of data or this type of data. Like your personal searches, like how to hack my dad's phone, how to hack my girlfriend's phone number and so on and Facebook, Instagram. I'm talking about the financial data which matters basically. The breach disclosed Americans this type of data, their social security number, their driving license, their addresses previously and uh, like their previous addresses and recent addresses. Now this is a information which in America is very difficult to get. If you are a federal prisoner or a witness then only this information you have to disclose. But this information right now is in public domain for sale anyone can go there and buy if they have certain money. And they say all transactions are purely anonymous through a currency known as bitcoins, I hope you know that, which is very difficult to trace that who is behind this type of attack. So right now I am going to show you practically that how hackers breached into Equifax website or their servers and stole the entire information which was there on the server. So I have a simulation for that attack. This is a server, this is Trust2. So Trust2 basically is a, is a server, Tomcat Apache server, which basically on which you can host your website. So Equifax were using this server, but they didn't patch one vulnerability, which was there, which should be patched on time. And they just delay one to two months. And this was triggered by the hackers. So just an example, whenever you get a software update on your smartphones, how many you update immediately? or you wait for free, you know, Wi-Fi, because it's quite a deal. <laughs> so that's a problem, you know. So this is a server which is having that vulnerability. Now, this is the IP address, if you can see, and uh, you can hope that this is equifax.com. I just didn't purchase the domain, I just have put my server on. And now, what I'm going to do is, there is a script which was available, let me show you. So, in case you're able to see, so this is a script or this is exploit which was publicly available right now for anyone to go for. And uh, I will not go with the details of this exploit, but uh, 
it's in python but this this exploit will trigger the vulnerability which is there in the apache struts and then can take advantage to have entire control on the server nowadays hackers are not interested to delete something from your database of your website change your page to a very scary page hacker was here you know hey, what's up <laughs> you got hacked you know previously you have seen you know some countries are hacking into another countries and putting a very scary message that and with some you know good words there for you so but nowadays the trend is changing they are more interested in your money because if it is an e-commerce website they will get into your website they will try to steal credit card information details of the customer and then they can actually use that information to do some online purchases so if your card is being used in indonesia do you think it's a good probability you get money back there from there no of course right it's out of our jurisdiction so this is exploit which i am going to use now let me show you so what i am going to do is i am going to cat cat means it's a command in linux to uh, uh, pull up the text in front of you just to echo just to print f and right now i am going to see that what are the so i can remotely explore i can remotely explore the folders which are there on the server so if you can see there are so many folders which are there which same uh, same like this a criminal basically gets into it and see these kind of folder but the thing which i am interested is it's a database can you see that database folder so now database basically contains the user information and such uh, critical information which should not be visible to the public you know it's the back end that's why we call it back end not visible to the front end people so right now i am going to get into the database and there is a there is a sql file known as users the users who are using the website so now this is the same file which was there in the aquafax kind of file if you are able to access that we are going to get username passwords and other critical information which is saved behind the firewalls and behind the security so as i'm going to press enter here you will see all the username like mike their passwords and their hash password which were there his male or female whatever uh, roger is female how how it's possible but it's okay so <laughs> so these are the information this is how and this information was taken over and then put it on the deep web for selling now everyone is having this information and can use this information as for for many kind of you know cyber crimes which are there now why we are addressing this issue it happens in america we are sitting in india well let me start with this thing again how many are using smartphones here i know it's a good question anybody having said nokia 1100 <laughs> so how many of think you are smart enough to use that smartphone raise your hand one okay two so i can actually count there are one or two people now this is the very problem now you know how smart is your smartphone and now you know how smartphone uh, smart you are so it is just like a, now you are having a very smart device in the hands of not a smart person and as a result it which is going to be exploited by some smart guy sitting somewhere in the world nice quote right <laughs> i spent 3 minutes on that <laughs> now now please understand you are using smartphone from last how many years 3 to 5 years if i ask you do you know 80% features of your smartphone nobody have open compass there i can guarantee you on that <laughs> now this is the very problem you are not trained to use the smartphone and you are not trained to use the technology in a perfected way because you think it's a technology please understand this is a part of our life now let me show you something india is the biggest user one of the biggest user of torrent sites right you use torrent ah uh, don't use it <laughs> it's illegal 3 year in prison nowadays you know that you know that still you are using sir no oh, that's okay now no fine so i only use for the books you know <laughs> So how many using how how many use uh, think that torrents are safe anybody nobody still you are using wow nice now i'll tell you why you should not use torrents i'm not saying you should never use torrents i used to do that then i saw something then i got scared well let me show you something then so do you see this file what it says dangal dvd rip 1080p and i know you don't compromise with quality you know that's why i, I tried to do 4k but i said 1080p it's okay you know 
and you are GOT guys, so I understand. <laughs> Minimum 1080p. So some people got this late, you know, <laughs> but it's okay. So now, if this file is in your computer, what you will do? Open with uTorrent or BitTorrent, yes or no? Very cute file, right? You download it from torrent site. Now, on the other hand, if you see this, this is the attacker's machine. So I'm using an operating system known as Kali Linux. It's a penetration testing operating system. There, I have infected this file in such a way that it is going to bypass every antivirus which is there. It's a FUD, fully undetectable. Second, firewalls, whatever the things you are installing, we can bypass that for sure. So if I put this file online and you're going to double click on that, then your entire computer, including your camera, including your hard drive, including your, all the files which are there is going to be controlled by someone, that smart guy, remotely anywhere in the world. I know you watch Crime Patrol, you don't believe me, you need proof. So let me show you then. So this is my attacker machine, just observe here. This is my attacker machine which is there. So now, as I'm going to double click on this file, there will, some, there will be something you know, which is going to happen. So I double clicked on that. And you can see here, it says, Metaprater session one is open. So these two machines are, one is here and one is there. And now I got compromised. So as I'm going to press enter here, and I type sessions minus I one, and you can see here there is a metaprater. If I tip screen, screenshot, press enter. Now I just took a screenshot of this machine on my attacker's machine, which is anywhere in the world. So you have to see that what it captured. I'll go to my home folder and you can see here. Can you see that? So this is the same screenshot which I just took remotely when you double click in your home on that torrent file. No antivirus pop up, no nothing. Now this is the very problem. Our world produces today almost this much of GB every day. These are the quotes from World Economic Forum. And if you're good in maths, you can understand. When this much amount of data is there, then definitely we should have to take care of that. Now, these are the things which are there, which you mostly trust on antiviruses, firewalls, DLP solutions, filter incoming, outgoing connections. So this is a technical person can deploy that. But I can tell you the business in which I am working and we have seen or each and everything which is there written on this screen can be compromised by hackers. It's just a matter of time. Guaranteed. Now, if this is the case, what we should do? Well, we have seen these kind of news, JP Morgan accused, CIA agents covertly stealing the information. There is a chaos going on in the world and it's traditionally right now it's the paradise of hackers to steal information globally because they know that there's no conviction power they aren't going to get under. So what we should do? So these are a few things we should take care of before, you know, jumping into the cybersecurity. First of all, 24 months ago, India was having only 15 million smartphones, 2017. Now we are having 250 million smartphones and majority of people just jumped into using a digital phone without having proper knowledge and that is what a criminal is targeting, your awareness. Lack of awareness, maximum hack happens because some people click on torrents, they want free MS Office, they want free softwares which are there and they just download that, double click on that. Who is, why people are giving things for, for you for free? They are not your siblings. So once, once you download that, once you download that, then definitely there is a thing which is going to be compromised and that's your privacy. If you have, there is a thing, you know, nothing to hide, nothing to fear, because, but you know that what you hide, what you hide and what you not. Then our Indian IT Act, government should understand that our Indian IT Act, which, will, which prevents the cyber fraud was designed in 2000 and there were some amendments which was done in 2008. But still, they are not enough, you know. We have to revamp the entire cyber law from A to Z to understand and to tackle these cyber frauds because that law is too outdated. Then you must report law to your law enforcement whenever you see any crime happen. How many of you report when you lost your smartphone to police department? Very few. Now, if that smartphone is going to be used by a cyber criminal or terrorist, then definitely you will be in a problem. 
So no matter whether you will get the phone or not, or SIM card or not, you have to report to police. This is kind of your safety. Then cybersecurity awareness to government, private agencies, and education sector. I'm very feel sad that in India, we don't have a culture of education in cybersecurity in most of the institute and colleges, universities. I hope this culture will come at least one chapter if from schools to the colleges, which should may be mandatory. So that person should understand what, what are the do's and don'ts in terms of when they are using internet. Now in smart cities, the, I hope you know that smart cities are coming up. And in smart cities, the bigger challenge will be the hardware and the di digital hardware which we are going to use to deploy and take care of the cities. If that hardware is having a backdoor or uh, malware inside it, then no antivirus can detect it. Now there are some countries I don't want to name, they are implanting the malware into the hardware. And suppose that malware hardware is basically deployed into a nuclear power plant or electricity grid in a smart city, you can understand the person can remotely control that. And there will be a pure disaster for the city in the future in smart cities. So we have to audit that hardware before deploying into the cities or smart cities. And again, awareness of the things which are there, like in rural areas, now biggest frauds are happening is not in terms of the technology. There is no problem in the technology, but the amount we are losing as a country is more because of the awareness of people who are in India. So, a person who's going to call the uh, rural guy and tell I'm calling from bank, he speaks in English and the guy is thinking, okay, this is quite a deal. So he tells everything to that person. So when a bank is opening an account of a rural person, he should tell them, they should tell them that, sir, do not uh, click, uh, pick any call or do not share these details. Nobody is doing it for the time being in my understanding of capacity. So, but it, if they spend two minutes on that to a rural person, then I think we have at most 60 to 70 percent of the solution by just doing this thing, not a rocket science. And last thing is, the incorporate people decision making authorities like uh, board members, they should have a dedicated budget on the cybersecurity, which I feel is the need of the hour. If you see the Equifax from 17 million there, um, the evaluation goes almost six to seven billion below. Now that's quite a deal. In just one, one month, their evaluation goes six billion below because of one hack. So I think they should depend, they should deploy much money on the budget of the cybersecurity in terms of people, process, and technology. Train people, deploy good technology, because if they are, they're spending too much money on the people part, uh, on the technology part, but they are not spending money on the people part. No matter how much big softwares, how much good hardware you are deployed in the companies, if the person who is not capable of sitting there, he is not capable of handling that technology, someone will trigger the person and through the person he can trigger into your organization. So you must pay attention to people in the organization, like an accountant of an organization. He is the real victim to be hacked. If he got hacked, he is having no clue about cybersecurity, but he is taking care of the most critical information of your company. So corporates has to be proactive because they must understand offense is the new defense today in the borderless environment. There's a quote that we can patch any technology, but there's no patch of human stupidity. So whenever you're clicking your picture, whenever you're sharing something, you're chatting with someone, make sure, presume you're already hacked. And one day someone is going to see that, whether it is a picture, video, or whatever the things are. Once you have this, Mindset, then definitely you will be quite secure in terms of using internet and uh, hoping for the best. In India, we are not a country which run by rule. And if you really want to transform a digital India to a secure digital India, then a basic information or basic security awareness has to happen to every citizen of India. And that is quite possible. Thank you so much.